On slide 28, we turn to uh, another example of multiple indicators in the cross-sectional data, namely multi-level factor analysis. So we're going to take as a standard example students observed within schools. So we have a between-level part of the model and a within-level part. The within-level part has to do with student variation, and the between-level part has to do with school variation, variation across schools. So here we're looking at three items. In this case, they're categorical. And uh, we're assuming for simplicity a single factor on the within-level, FW. And as usual, uh, we have a factor model where the arrows have coefficients corresponds to the factor loadings lambda. And we have residuals for those uh, indicators. But also we have uh, this filled circle notation which indicates that we have random intercepts. So intercepts for these three variables that vary uh, across schools. So we have these latent variables on the between level corresponding to the random intercepts. So you have continuous latent random intercept variables. And they can also be, their covariance matrix can also be structured by a factor model. In this case, for simplicity, a single factor, F between, that influences each of the items with different loadings and with residuals as well. So it's like having a factor analysis model on within and another factor no analysis model on between. Typically, you have many more factors on within than on the between level. And the within level, and that's because the within level has to do with uh, variation across students, or across individuals, which is typically larger than the variation across a cluster unit such as schools. And typically, you would have many more factors on the within level than on the between level. So on the within level, you could have uh, abilities represented by uh, representing rather mathematics, reading, science, performance. So maybe three factors. Whereas on the between level, uh, those same s subjects, the variation across them with respect to school variation could be represented perhaps with a single factor, uh, school excellence or something like that. And there's therefore no uh, need to expect, or no reason to expect, that you would have the same number of factors. And even if you had the same number of factors, there's no reason to believe that you have the same factor loadings on within and between. So here we have a situation where we allow a random intercept for each variable, for each factor indicator. In this case, letting them vary across schools. So you can ask yourself, actually, then if you think back to the previous slides talking about random intercept factor analysis, perhaps you could then also add a random intercept factor on the within level to represent variation across individuals, across students, and that's common to all of the items. I don't know how relevant that would be. I don't know if that has been done. Now, the uh, multi-level factor analysis model can be thought of as a model for the within and between level variation. So you can write the, uh, the uh, vector of responses, in this case for a continuous variable, where the factor, multi-level factor analysis started, uh, in terms of between and within level variation. So these are actually then random uh, latent variables and that can be obtained by a random effects ANOVA or multivariate random effects ANOVA. You can actually create sample covariance matrices for these uh, vectors, and vector meaning that we are looking at all of the items, three items uh, according to the previous slide. And then you can uh, impose a factor structure for each of these parts, the between part and the within part. So here you have the between part. It's a factor loading matrix multiplied by the factors on between plus some residual on between. And the YW part can be written in terms of a factor model with W subscripts. 
So you have a covariance structure for the y, which is sigma b plus sigma w, where each covariance ma matrix has a factor model structure lambda, psi lambda prime plus theta, where psi is the factor covariance matrix and theta is the residual covariance matrix. We could just add the uh, subscripts b or w on these three parameter matrices. It's interesting to, to think uh, a bit more about equation 8. For instance, if you move yb over to the left-hand side, uh, y, the observed y minus the yb uh, yields you yw within variation. So you have latent variables centered the y variable, which I referred to in passing in previous slides. <coughs> A multi-level factor analysis seems to have started uh, in the uh, 1970s. Here's a fellow Swede, Kjell Hanqvist, who wrote an article in 1978 about primary mental abilities of collective and individual levels, so class or school level and student level. And I think he uh, visited Stanford earlier, where Lee Kronbach had been working on a um, research project that related to multi-level modeling, early multi-level modeling thinking. I think Shell Hanquist was inspired by that. And much later, a decade later, a statistician uh, jumped in, Harvey Goldstein and uh, Rod McDonald wrote a paper in Psychometrica where they looked at these covariance structures on between and within. And then McDonald and Goldstein came back uh, for in and made a publication in the British Journal of Mathematical and Statistical Psychology. <clears throat> if you want an overview, you can take a look at my paper from 1994 in Sociological Methods and Research, where I give a little bit of a literature overview and show how this modeling can be easily fitted into a structural equation modeling framework. I go into slide 30. Now, if we look at one factor indicator at a time for individual i in uh, school j in this case. So we have the, uh, then the logit model written in terms of now in the, on the variable le level instead of a, so scalars instead of matrices. New intercept in the, again, Lisfeld y only notation. The intercept and the between level variation and then the within level variation. And again, there's no within level residual. There's no residual in the uh, logistic regression. Now, I condition then, uh, you have a condition on dot here. It means that uh, you condition on, on any random quantity on the right, by which I mean that I'm not talking about the marginal probability of u being one, but I'm talking about the conditional probability as a function of these quantities on the right. The marginal probability would integrate out all of these, sum over all of these random variables. Now we can write this model, which at first we think of as a factor model for a between level covariance matrix and a, within, and a factor model for a within level covariance matrix. We can instead ex express it by two equations like this, where u sub j is seen as a random intercept for this item in this school. And that random intercept has an intercept nu and then is regressed on the between level factor and its residual. So if you plug 12 into 11, then you get 10. But it's written in a very suggestive way here. That is, we think of the uh, factor model on between as being a structure for the random intercept. So it's totally in line with two-level logistic regression with a random intercept and fixed slope. So the random intercept varies across the level two units, that is schools. Now if you take this a little bit further on slide 31 and think about it, more, what does a random intercept mean? Well, it means that you don't have the same intercept 
in all of the between level units. So we can think of that as a measurement non invariance matter. You know, we have a measurement model here, observed variables u as a function of latent variables, and factors on within and between. So we don't have measurement invariance, and we have non invariance with respect to the intercept. This has been written about in the continuous outcome setting by Yuck and others in the Structural Equation Modeling Journal and by me and uh, TMR Sparaho in SMNR, Sociological Methods and Research, where we compare this random effects modeling of measurement non invariance to uh, the alignment approach in M. For categorical outcomes, it's been written by Jean-Paul Fox and in British Journal of Mathematical and Statistical Psychology and by Fox and Glass in a 2001 psychometric article. And again, these references, the full, full format references are given in a separate document that's posted together with this web talk. So you have measurement non-invariance, but it's okay because you model it, you take it into account. So it's a random effect version of measurement non-invariance. Uh, and th the thinking behind that is a little bit further explicated in, in this literature. Now just to um, expand the horizons a little bit here, in multi-level IRT, multi-level item response theory, you know, for test items, uh, this random intercept notion is also used. Again, Jean-Paul Fox, he wrote a 2010 book related to this, and he has an article in an edited book, Random Item Effects Modeling for Cross-National Survey Data. And essentially it's a variation on this multi-level factor model again. You have a logistic regression here with a random intercept, and the random intercept is given a factor structure here. Now, multi-level IRT, uh, in my readings of it, seem to, um, by and large, mostly, assume that the loadings are the same on the within and between level. So these loadings are the same. And that there are no residuals on the between level. If you make that assumption in equation 15 and 16, you get to equation 17 and 18 down here. So you have one lambda, that's the first line, and you have the same lambda on the second line with residual zero. Now, if you write it that way, then you can think of this as a random intercept for the factor. That is, you can rewrite 17 and 18 as 19 and 20 by writing lambda times fij, where fij is the sum of the between and the within variation. You know, if you multiply that with the lambda fb la times lambda fw, then multiply by the same thing, then you have equation, se equation 17 and 18. So you have one random intercept for the factor, not a separate random intercept for each u. So uh, if you think in terms of maximum likelihood estimation and numerical integration, you have fewer, smaller dim number of uh, dimensions of integration, easier computations. Now, if you look at this in terms of pictures, then uh, first I talked, we have two types of multi level factor models. First, I talked about the multi level factor analysis setting, and then I talked about the IRT setting on the right. So let's look at this carefully then again. On the left hand side, within variation, is this is within school variation, so variation across students. It influences the part of the observed variables uh, that are not influenced by FB. So these filled circles mean that we have taken out the between level variation in the items, and FW affects, influences what's left in the use in the U variables, namely the within variation. And on between then you have these random intercepts for each variable, which you may or may not want to structure by a factor. They can be totally unrestricted to, 
except that would, in maximum likely estimation, lead to uh, a lot of at least five dimensions here. And you have a residual, this is the epsilon b residual for each item in between. If you want to, and I think I did in early drawings, you can connect these u circles to the u boxes here. So you can see that they are influencing part of u. Now, but we have a clean separation of within and between variation. Now in the RRT setting, we put the random intercept not on the items. There's not an item specific random intercept, but a random intercept for the factor. So dot down here, and that dot is the F between factor. So according to the previous slide, formula 20, F is part F between, part F within. And then the, there are no residual arrows here, like there are on the left-hand side. So this is a different uh, formulation where F is no longer pure within variation, but it consists of both within and between. As a matter of fact, you may prefer to write this model in a different way by having an FB factor sitting down here and influencing the F w and thereby influencing the items indirectly because the IRT model imposes equality of the loadings on between and on within so that would be perfectly okay to let the between factor influence the within factor because then it would influence the items with the same loading as the within part so just getting used to uh, different pictorial descriptions of the models